Hello, everyone, and welcome to the composite clustering of non relational data with mixed types using K modes and K prototypes by Makram Janedi and Khaled Bendris. Both the authors, Khaled Bendris, CTO at WeView, and myself, data scientist at the WeView Labs team. So, first of all, we're going to talk about clustering in general, which is the process of grouping a set of observations or items into subsets that we might call clusters. And we're going to focus on the partitioning clustering methods, like the well-known k-means, k and its variations like k-medoids, k-medians, k-modes, and k-prototypes. So these variations use the same process of initialization, assignment, updating centroids, and repeating the second and the third step until uh, convergence. Also, they use um, the same process of uh, minimizing a cost function. So the main differences between these variations are in initialization using uh, random centroids or choosing from data points. Also, the centroids might be the means, the medians, uh, the medoids, the modes, or even the prototypes. And for the distances used, the, they might use the Euclidean distance, the Hamming distance in the case of K-modes, or even the a combination of both in the case of K-prototypes. So we might sometimes be dealing with special cases like working with mixed data types where we have continuous and categorical attributes in our data set. Or for example, working with the non-relational data like in the example below, which is a well-known JSON format, the key value JSON format. But sometimes we might have some keys like required that might have multiple values. So the possible solutions for these use cases are for mixed data types, we might use K prototypes algorithm. For the non-relational data with multi-valued attributes, we might use aggregations like aggregating, like using the mean, the max, or the minimum of, uh, of the continuous labels or the mode of, of categorical labels. Also, we might uh, use the mapping of a NoSQL database into a SQL database, which is not a good solution actually. And we also can encode the categorical attributes into dummy features. And this will create um, a high dimensional space. And we're going to be uh, using a PCA, of, for example, to reduce the dimensionality. And finally, this is another good solution, uh, like described in the article of Huang, while he, he compared K prototypes to using a PCA followed by K means. Also, we can use the word to vec. It's a good solution, but finally, we cannot assign um, multiple clusters to a single label. We will explain this later in the following sections. So our methodology proposes a solution for the multi-value with non-relational data with mixed types using a composite two-step clustering method based on K-modes and K-prototypes algorithms. So we use it KMOS in the first step to create clusters from labels of the multi-valued categorical attribute. And then we use a voting system that will assign a unique value for each multi-valued uh, attribute, initially multi-valued attribute. So this is achieved by replacing every value in the list of, uh, of labels of that multi-valued key by the, by the cluster it belongs to then we can extract the most represented cluster, which will be the unique value, and it will be assigned to that key. In the second step, we use the K prototypes algorithm to cluster individuals or objects in our data set using the continuous, the categorical, and the pre-processed attributes from step one. So before moving on with explaining our method, we will be defining some conventions that we will be using later. So by attribute, we mean, for example, a properties, type, title, or required. So for example, required is the type of variables we will be, we will be dealing with in the first step of K modes. Uh, it has um, an array, a list of labels, a list of values, here in the example, it has two values, but we might have uh, an attribute with hundreds of values. So these are called labels. And the whole document, we will call it object. Step one, which is the K-modes algorithm, is based on creating a new flatnet data set 
where columns are the mentioned labels of one multi-valued attribute, we will call it here target attribute, across all objects. And rows are the object IDs or indexes. So if we go back to the previous example, the required uh, attribute will be our target value variable, which is a multi-valued uh, key. And um, the rows uh, will be the object IDs. The columns will be the labels of uh, the attribute re required across all the objects of the data set. And then for each object, um, if a label is mentioned in the target attributes list of values, a tag one will be assigned to the correspondent uh, object label index in the created data set. Else, the default value will be zero. And then we will implement a K-modes algorithm that considers the value zero and one as categories. And this will generate clusters of objects. Here's an example that illustrates how the Platinet data set will look like. As we mentioned previously, the columns are uh, existing labels in the multi-valued attribute across all objects. So for example, uh, for object one, it is mentioned in the multi-valued attribute. It is mentioned in the label one and label three in its list of values. So uh, before we move on, I would like to remind you that after this, um, we implemented the K-modes K-modes algorithm that considers the values of zero and one as categories, which will generate initial clusters of objects. So when we analyze the mode of each created cluster of objects, which is a vector of modes, this is how K-modes work, and we extract which variables of the modes vector that have the value of one, I'd like to remind you that in our flatnet data set, the variables can take either zero or one as values. So the mode of each variable can be either zero or one. And we extract the variables that have the value of one in the modes vector then we will be able to generate new groups of labels. This is the main idea in our step one of our method. So I will illustrate it more with this example. If the generated clusters are the following three, uh, and we look at the mode of the cluster one, the green one, uh, the mode of this cluster is the following vector, then we will be able to say that label one, label four, label five, and label eight and belong to the same group of labels. Reminding you again that these are the variables of our flatnet data set. So this step also allows a label to belong to multiple groups at the same time. Before moving on, I would like to remind you of the process of step one, which is to create clusters from labels of multivalue with categorical attribute. Then the sub step two, which is to implement a voting system that is able to assign a unique value instead of a list of values for a certain multivaluate key. So how is, how is this done? Uh, if we take an example, uh, this object as an example, which has the following multivaluate key with label one, label two, label three, four, and five. And after we implemented the K-modes algorithm and generated the clusters of labels, we found out that Label three belongs to cluster two, label four to cluster two, label two also belongs to cluster two. And we found out that label five, for example, belongs to cluster three and one at the same time. So what the voting system does, it replaces um, the multi values, the, multi, the list of values by a unique value, which is cluster two, which is the cluster that is most represented in the list of values of that categorical key. What I would like to note here is that we may not have only one categorical multivalued attribute, but we may have multiple ones. So the same process can be applied on all of these attributes to make them single valued. Next, the pre-processed data, along with our continuous and categorical attributes from our initial data set can be passed to a K-prototypes algorithm to generate clusters of objects. Next, we will be presenting an evaluation of our methodology on real-world data, where we aim it to cluster applicants based on their resumes. So the pipeline goes from extracting the resumes into a raw collection, 
then creating a pre-processed collection where we performed some cleanings, standardizations, feature engineering. So the variables, some of the variables of this pre-processed collection are years of experience, for example, number of skills, number of projects, number of certifications, and a multi-valued attribute, which is skills. So we need to apply K modes to make the skills attribute single valued. Then we pass all these pre-processed continuous and categorical skills to a K prototypes algorithm to perform and to, the, to generate new clusters. So during the K mode step, we aim it to generate clusters of skills and to make the skills attribute single valued. For this, we use it the, cost, the following cost function and an elbow method that will help us to choose the optimal K number of clusters, which is an important parameter in every partitioning clustering method. So the following cost function sums the dissimilarities between points of each cluster. Based on the results that we got uh, from the elbow method, the chosen optimal number of clusters to use is 25. Some of the generated clusters of skills are, for example, the first one that contains Java, SQL, Linux, Python, machine learning, Hadoop, big data, Spark, that we can name it AI and big data. Also the second one, for example, that contains uh, Java, Hibernate, Spring, Maven, Scrum, and that we can name it software engineering. And another example uh, that contains project management, strategy, business strategy, and we can name it project management. Also, you can see that there are some skills that belong to multiple clusters at the same time. Before moving to the next step, which is the K prototype step, I would like to mention that we applied the same voting system and our multi-valued skills attribute and transformed it into a single valued one based on the generated clusters from the K-mode step. Next, we use it our pre-processed attribute with, along with our categorical and continuous variables from the initial data set. We passed them to a K-prototypes algorithm and generated clusters of applicants. To be able to visualize and make interpretations of our K-prototypes clusters, we implemented the PCA and used the first two components to make a plot of our clusters. To identify these components, we used the contribution of initial variables to each one of these two components. So we found out that the first one is more related with seniority and employment. However, the second one is linked with technologies and experience acquired. Some of the interpretations that we made are, for example, the cluster one contains applicants with less seniority and less technical experience than those of cluster zero. So to summarize the process of our method, if we start with a non-relational data with mixed types, we can apply K modes and a voting system to transform the multi-valued attributes into single valued ones. Then we can apply K prototypes to generate clusters of objects. For future work, we can do some optimizations of K modes and K prototypes. Also, we can optimize our process and we can think about a profile recommendation system which can propose the most suitable applicants for specific demanded profile. Thank you very much for your attention.